हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल आई एम सुप्रीत कौर वेलकम्स ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन आवर यूट्यूब चैनल स्मार्ट पीटी ट्रिक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक्स ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर योर लव एंड सपोर्ट and today i am here to announce yeah, announce that now we are arranging our online classes again for some circumstances we were not arranging online classes and we got some complaints from all of you who are interested but uh, now we are arranging online classes on time especially reading and speaking modules and if you are interested you can contact us on the number given below as our contact preferences are changed now and uh, again i would like to thanks all of you from depth of my heart because for with your love and support we are reaching here and uh, keep supporting daniel harris a scholar of consumption and style has observed that until photography finally supplanted illustration as the primary means of advertising clothing in the 1950s glamour inhered less in the face of the drawing which was by necessity schematic and generalized than in the sketch's attitude posture and gestures especially in the strangely dainty positions of the hands Glamour once resided so emphatically in the stance of the model that the faces in the illustrations cannot really be said to have expressions at all, but angles or tilts. The chin raised upwards in a haughty look. The eyes lowered in an attitude of introspection. The head cocked at an inquisitive or coquettish angle, or the profile presented in sharp outline, emanating power the severity like an emperor's bust embossed on a Roman coin. Affordable early years education and childcare potentially enables parents, particularly mothers, to be in paid employment. International studies have found that countries with greater enrollment rates in publicly funded or provided childcare also have higher maternal employment rates, although entangling causal relationships is complex. From the point of view of the household, additional income, especially for the less well-off, is itself associated with better outcomes for children, as child poverty has been shown to be a key independent determinant of children's outcomes. From the point of view of the public purse, as mothers enter employment, they are likely to claim fewer benefits and to generate extra revenues through income tax. Look at the recent most respected companies survey by the Financial Times. Who are the most respected companies and business leaders at the current time? Rather predictably, they are Jack White and General Electric and Bill Gates and Microsoft both have achieved their world-class status through playing nice. Wech is still remembered for the brutal downsizing he led his business through and for the environmental pollution incidents and prosecutions. Microsoft has had one of the highest profile cases of bullying market dominance of recent times. and gates has been able to achieve the financial status where he can choose to give lots of money away by being ruthless in business The fall of smallpox began with the realization that survivors of the disease were immune for the rest of their lives. This led to the practice of variolation, a process of exposing a healthy person to infected material from a person with smallpox in the hopes of producing a mild disease that provided immunity from further infection. The first written account of variolation describes a Buddhist nun practicing around 1022 to 1063 AD by the 1700s. This method of variolation was common practice in China, India, and Turkey. In the late 1700s European physicians used this and other methods of variolation but reported devastating results in some cases overall 2% to 3% of people who were variolated died of smallpox but this practice decreased the total number of smallpox fatalities by tenfold
Sociology is, in very basic terms, the study of human societies. In this respect, it is usually classed as one of the social sciences, along with subjects like psychology, and was established as a subject in the late 18th century, through the work of people like the French writer Auguste Comte. However, the subject has only really gained acceptance as an academic subject in the 20th century through the work of writers such as Emile Durkheim, Max Weber and Talcott Parsons, names that will be visited throughout this course. One name that you may have heard of, Karl Marx, the founder of modern communism, has probably done more to stimulate people's interest in the subject than anyone else, even though he lived and wrote, 1818–1884 in a period before sociology became fully established as an academic discipline. The study of objects constitutes a relatively new field of academic enquiry, commonly referred to as material culture studies. Students of material culture seek to understand societies, both past and present, through careful study and observation of the physical or material objects generated by those societies. The source material for study is exceptionally wide, including not just human-made artifacts but also natural objects and even preserved body parts, as you saw in the film, encountering a body, some specialists in the field of material culture have made bold claims for its preeminence. In certain disciplines, it reigns supreme. It plays a critical role in archaeology, for example, especially in circumstances where written evidence is either patchy or non-existent. Learning is a process by which behavior or knowledge changes as a result of experience. Learning from experience plays a major role in enabling us to do many things that we clearly were not born to do, from the simplest tasks, such as flipping a light switch, to the more complex, such as playing a musical instrument. To many people, the term, learning, signifies the activities that students do reading, listening, and taking tests in order to acquire new information. This process, which is known as cognitive learning, is just one type of learning, however. Another way that we learn is by associative learning, which is the focus of this module. You probably associate certain holidays with specific sights, sounds, and smells, or foods with specific flavors and textures. We are not the only species with this skill even the simplest animals such as the earthworm can learn by association. Snails are not traditionally known for quick thinking, but new research shows they can make complex decisions using just two brain cells in findings that could help engineers design more efficient robots. Scientists at the University of Sussex attached electrodes to the heads of freshwater snails as they searched for lettuce. They found that just one cell was used by the mollusk to tell if it was hungry or not, while another let it know when food was present. Food searching is an example of goal-directed behavior, during which an animal must integrate information about both its external environment and internal state while using as little energy as possible. Lead researcher Professor George Kemenes said, this will eventually help us design the brains of robots based on the principle of using the fewest possible components necessary to perform complex tasks. From the earliest civilizations, plants and animals have been portrayed as a means of understanding and recording their potential uses, such as their economic and healing properties. From the first illustrated catalogue of medicinal plants, the Materia Medica by Dioscorides, in the 1st century, through to the late 14th century, 
the illustration of plants and animals changed very little. Woodcuts in instructional manuals and herbals were often repeatedly copied over the centuries, resulting in a loss of definition and accuracy so that they became little more than stylized decoration. With the growing popularity of copper plate engravings, the traditional use of woodcuts declined and the representation of plants and animals became more accurate. The supply of a thing, in the phrase, supply and demand, is the amount that will be offered for sale at each of a series of prices. The demand is the amount that will be bought at each of a series of prices. The principle that value depends on supply and demand means that in the case of nearly every commodity, more will be bought if the price is lowered, less will be bought if the price is raised. Therefore sellers, if they wish to induce buyers to take more of a commodity than they are already doing, must reduce its price. If they raise its price, they will sell less. If there is a general falling off if in demand, due, say, to trade depression, sellers will either have to reduce prices or put less on the market. They will not be able to sell the same amount at the same price, similarly with supply. At a certain price a certain amount will be offered for sale, at a higher price more will be offered, at a lower price less. If consumers want more, they must offer a higher price. If they want less, they will probably be able to force prices down. That is the first result of a change in demand or supply. Some children may need to learn to stand up for their own ideas especially when these do not conform to those of the rest of the group. But children also need to learn discretion, so that they can judge when it is appropriate to be divergent and original, and when it is appropriate to conform. The creative process is fun, it should not be taken too seriously. Creativity may seem like a fun, self-indulgent activity to counteract the more serious work of the classroom. But the creative process presents many challenges. It requires concentration, persistence and determination to succeed. It may in fact be a frustrating and difficult process. Creativity deserves to be taken seriously. Adults, therefore, can act as supporters and coaches, facilitators and models of creativity for children. But on the other hand, adults also have the potential to stifle opportunities for creativity by being overly didactic or prescriptive. They can limit creativity by discouraging fantasy or by having low expectations about what young children are able to achieve. Children do benefit from free play and unstructured arts activities. But left entirely to their own devices, children's play and artwork can become routine and repetitive. Children need stimulation and creative problems to solve. Adults can help children to develop their creative skills through play. The Arts Council of England asked the NFER to summarize recent research and theory on creativity in early childhood. The work entailed a selective review of research and theory published between 1988 and 2000 and resulted in a briefing paper on the subject. This article sets out to update the earlier paper and to identify some of the principles involved in helping young children to develop their creativity in early year settings.
Children find it easy to transfer learning from one area, domain to another. All the evidence shows that most children find it very difficult to transfer learning from one area to another. Knowledge and skills are so context-specific that children may simply fail to recognize that something they had already learned can be applied to a new situation. Adults can help children to make the connection. Creativity is limited to art subjects. Although creativity is often associated with creative subjects, such as art and music, creativity is not subject-specific. Creativity is a way of approaching problem-solving that can be exercised in different areas. On the other hand, creativity does not take place in a vacuum. The way in which children express creativity will be different in different curriculum areas. There is a balance to be struck here, because insisting on extensive knowledge and skill development can be stultifying. On the other hand, knowledge and skill are fundamental to creativity. Existing knowledge of the world is a starting point for young children's play. It is important to consider what might constitute originality in the work of a young child. After all, only a child prodigy could be expected to come up with something new and valuable to society. Instead, each child's creative abilities can be related to his, her personal stage of development. For example, a young child's work may be adaptive and original for that particular child and or in relation to children in their class or age group. While there is a body of research into the impact of artists in school schemes, the role of artists in encouraging young children's creativity has not yet been well researched. In other words, although the involvement of professional artists and creative workers has considerable potential to get be helpful, we do not have research evidence to say what kinds of involvement may have the greatest impact on creativity. These definitions have been welcomed as giving recognition to the importance of creativity and the role of education in encouraging creative development. The appearance of creativity as an aim of the curriculum in England is part of a trend to recognize the importance of creativity internationally. Cultivating a strong feeling of community within the learning environment. In addition, students encountering difficulties pertaining to language acquisition or cultural adjustment can access counseling and support services, which are widely accessible. These services aim to promote the well-being and academic achievement of these students. Creativity is another term that people attach word meanings to but it can be difficult to define concisely into a single definition as the depth of understanding behind it is more complex. As thought provokingly suggests, the lens in which creativity is viewed is always evolving depending on societal or cultural changes. Therefore, answering, what is creativity, may reflect what is valuable or relevant in that moment in time to the people or persons.
The adoption of this complete mini bilingual program aims to empower our varied student group. Through the incorporation of critical literacy, cultural comprehension, and language competency, our educational environment fosters a supportive atmosphere in which students can flourish intellectually, linguistically, and culturally. Teaching and learning has the opportunity to explore more deeply into a subject which enables children to be more inquisitive through questioning and personal inquiry from the theme. This is a new journey for the school and we are truly still at the start of it, nevertheless there is a sense of freedom to explore creativity within the classroom. The primary exposures of the children are also ensured to be the same language speaking so that strategic mental growth can be supported. In the case of bilingual language and education, the families have the role of motivating the child for new learning processes. The development of a child's approach towards learning and the development of bilingual education is dependent on the scale to which the parents and the communities are influenced by language.